1990, Mike Oldfield produced the album I'm a Rock. It is one of his albums that I greatly enjoy. Which was ironic as it was being claimed that Mike rushed the album out just to get short of his contract with a well known music brand. What might not be as well known is that Mike had hidden several messages within the music. At certain points in his composition, Mike incorporated Morse code to write messages. One of these messages was directed to a former friend. Take a listen. Mike Oldfield, who single-handedly turned Virgin Records into a profitable enterprise with tubular bells in 1973, used Morse code to indicate his displeasure with his record label in 1990. Buried 48 minutes into an album of continuous music, Fuck Off RB, directed at Virgin Records impresario Richard Branson, was as creative a use of dots and dashes as any dream theater ass-eating. So from this introduction, I bet you can guess who this video was about. The Necker Island Dictator has led quite life, becoming an overnight success by publishing Tubular Bells by the aforementioned Mike Oldfield. He has worked hard throughout the years to become a successful businessman, and for that he does deserve credit. He bought his own island in the late 70s, got a knighthood in the year 2000 from Prince Charles himself. Keep that point in mind for later. I'm not making this entry to take away from his successes, but to point out his hypocrisy. According to the Richard Branson wiki, Branson's business empire is owned by a complicated series of offshore trusts and companies. The Sunday Times stated that his wealth is calculated at three billion several years ago. If he were to retire to his Caribbean island and liquidate all of this, he would pay relatively little in tax. Branson has been criticised for his business strategy and has been accused of being a carpetbagger. Branson responded that he is living on Necker Island for health rather than tax reasons. Although, in 2013, Branson described himself as a tax exile, having saved millions in tax by ending his mainland British residency and living on the British Virgin Islands. This was echoed by Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer, Labour's John MacDonald. In 2016, amid calls for his knighthood to be revoked. Despite ending his British residency prior to 2013, Branson has a habit of poking his nose in on the British public when it suits his agenda. This came across very clearly around the Brexit vote. Branson clearly voiced his displeasure at this vote, which means practically nothing coming from a non-British citizen. I thought you had given it up, Richard. So people are going to say to me, I demand proof of what you're claiming. Well, how about this for a start? Shortly after the Brexit vote in 2016, Richard was front page in The Guardian. Sir Richard Branson funded a new campaign group to fight Brexit. You may say sure, he had a one-off, but no, he has continued. In 2017, he was outed as using his fortunes to bankroll the anti-Brexit brigade, both directly with money and indirectly with office space and personnel. He was pushing the same crap in 2018 and 2019. So what we have is full-scale political interference from a foreign dictator supporting the practical gridlocking of the UK government for almost four years. So you might be saying, hang on, I thought this was supposed to be about hypocrisy, not about Mr. Branson's anti-Brexit stance, which he is entitled to hold. I will respond that no one was ever told they could not hold an anti-Brexit stance. But this was a whole different league. Technically, a case could be made for sedition. And I think one should be made, but that's another video. However, you are correct. I have not yet got to the hypocrisy part. To set the scene, it's April 2020. Brexit is happening. 
Corona has covered the earth and, due to the latter, planes across the world are grounded. What do we then see? Whoops! In an open letter to Virgin Group employees, company founder Richard Branson said he would offer his private island, he owns in the Caribbean, as collateral to save the airline and hospitality company, which is in financial straits during the coronavirus pandemic. Branson's conglomerate operates in some of the hardest hit sectors, including aviation, hotels and cruises. The billionaire tried to dispel criticism about asking for government aid, despite his massive personal wealth. I've seen lots of comments about my net worth, but that is calculated on the value of virgin businesses around the world before this crisis, not sitting as cash in a bank account ready to withdraw, Branson writes. Over the years, significant profits have never been taken out of the virgin group, Instead, they have been reinvested in building businesses that create value and opportunities. The challenge right now is that there is no money coming in and lots going out, the mogul continued. The company, which employs more than 70,000 people in 35 countries, has reduced wages for the Virgin Atlantic employees, which Branson said was a decision to save as many jobs as possible. To keep the airline from going under, he said the company will need support from the UK government. But critics point out Branson has paid no UK income tax since moving to the tax-free British Virgin Islands 14 years ago. The British government has announced two plans to help lessen the financial burdens of this pandemic on UK companies. The first is a $330 billion, or around $400 billion, coronavirus support package for the economy and the second is a 1.25 billion 1.5 billion dollar package to support new companies and startups that are not eligible for existing coronavirus rescue plans however after Denmark told companies registered in offshore tax havens they would not be eligible for coronavirus bailout money there have been calls for the UK and other countries to do the same the British newspaper the independent reports other companies and their properties overseas often allow for major tax breaks for the owners, as Branson well knows since establishing his official residency in the Virgin Islands. Branson bought Necker Island, where he lives, in 1978 for $180,000, according to Forbes. This property and others, as well as his businesses, contribute to a personal net worth that Forbes is estimated now at $4.3 billion. It appears Branson anticipated his offshore tax havens might impede his request for UK aid because in his open letter he made points of saying that he and his wife did not leave Britain for tax reasons and said he insisted it was because of our love of the beautiful British Virgin Islands and in particular Necker Island which I bought when I was 29 years old. Branson wrote that the rest of Necker Island is run as a business which employs 175 people and said that just like with other Virgin assets, our team will raise as much money against the island as possible to save as many jobs as possible around the group. Although the letter was addressed to all the Virgin family, it appears to be a case for getting a business loan from the British government. Branson wrote, our companies have created hundreds of thousands of jobs and paid hundreds of millions in tax around the world, and will continue to do so. Our companies based in the UK pay tax in the UK, and so forth. Branson said, Virgin Atlantic faces uncertainty surrounding travel today, and would like a commercial loan. It wouldn't be free money, and the airline would pay it back as EasyJet will do with the £600 million loan the government recently gave them, he wrote. The global airline industry has experienced never-before-seen purges in revenue during the coronavirus recession. Worse than what it was after 9-11, airlines expect to lose a total of £250 billion in revenue this year. CBS News Chris Van Cleve reported last month. Branson's letter called his and other airlines' woes and unprecedented crisis, 
adding that many airlines around the world need government support and many have already received it. Without it, there won't be any competition left and hundreds of thousands more jobs will be lost, along with critical connectivity and huge economic value. Virgin Atlantic started with one plane 36 years ago. Over those years, it has created real competition for British Airways, which must remain fierce for the benefit of our wonderful customers and the public at large. Yeah, in my opinion, it's pretty galling for Mr. Brunson to spit in the face of the UK people with his antics for years and then come running to us when there's trouble. So the government's response was a little satisfying a few days later. Thank you.